Tesla has finally updated their rather bland track mode with new software dubbed Track Mode V2. Now you have the ability to dial in the car's settings exactly as you want them. This is really good news. So the point of this video is to go in depth with the settings, talk about how the car performs with each different one on, of course, do a lot of drifting, and then we'll finish up with my recommendations on the best settings to use in your Tesla Model 3 Performance Track Mode version two. Here we go. So before we head out on track, let's talk a little bit about the setup of this Model 3 performance. Um, Tesla has just released a full track package. It's a hardware upgrade with lightweight, supposedly uh, performance 20 inch wheels with Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s, really, really good tires for the track. And then also upgraded pads and fluid, which are so badly needed on these cars. The brakes go almost instantly when you're driving them hard. Now there's nothing to say that you cannot upgrade this on your own. I'm not convinced that the track pack is the best package, but what I've done for this particular video, because I know we're gonna be tearing through this rubber, is I have put on the cheapest set of tires, I think ever on a Model 3 Performance. These are Century, not Century, Centauri, uh, what are they, UHPs, they were $50 a tire. Can you imagine that brand new tires for $50? They don't seem too bad. They're not very grippy, but they're great for sliding around and they seem to be lasting a while. You can see we've been hard on the car already. The wheels are covered in brake dust. So let's get out there on our Century tires and go sliding around in track mode version two. All right, we are here. I got my good friend, Mike, who's gonna help filming for today. And, um, I've just put the car in track mode, so let's try it out. Now that we have a wet surface, we're on our skid pad, which is part of our track. Again, we have a two mile road course here. If you haven't yet, please subscribe. We do a lot of electric cars ripping around the track. And we're gonna put the car into, I think, the everything in the middle to start. So we'll go 50-50, stability control off. And so just to give you an idea on these two settings, uh, this particular one is handling balance. It's not necessarily power distribution, we found out. Even if you go full rear wheel drive or full front wheel drive, when you floor it, both motors are still active, but it's more, do you want the car to understeer in the corner or oversteer? So it's more of a characteristic change. And naturally it does apply more power front and rear, but when you nail it, the car will give you everything it can from both motors. The stability assist will go basically, I guess, factory to normal track mode to not completely off, but very limited. Um, it does still kick in as we found out, but I think we'll start right there in the middle. And the regenerative braking is, uh, you know, obviously this slider, you should just set it to 100%. Um, so you can take the heat away from the brakes and stuff it into the drivetrain. The drivetrain cooling is so good that you're really not going to overheat the battery packer motors too quickly on this car. So we'll start by doing just a couple skids around in uh, a neutral handling balance with stability control, and then we'll adjust from there. I'm gonna keep compressor overclock off for now, unless I notice the battery temps getting warm. One last thing, the tires being blue does not mean that the tires are cold. It just means that they have grip. When they're red, it means you've exceeded your grip and then the brakes will be your brake temperature. So I think what I'll do is I'll turn it into a corner, nail it, and we'll see how aggressive the stability control is in this zero setting. So we'll get it over, get the car set, flooring it. So it does let you slide, and you can see the tires going red. And, but I could feel the front axle pulling there. So we'll do it again here, nailing it. It's still oversteer biased. And it's just, <laughs> all right, I, I kind of want to find out what happens if we go full front wheel drive with stability control on zero still. So nailing it. Yeah. See, it just understeers. Yeah, just understeers in a straight line. yeah it just plows. That's really <laughs> funny. <laughs> That's hilarious. Let's go stability control full on front wheel drive. <laughs> it's, like <doing> <laughs> it's just grabbing brakes. 
Okay, and so now let's go the opposite. Full minus 10 rear wheel drive. This is so cool that you can adjust this on the fly. And then full skids, <laughs> full skids. <laughs> so we have everything set to rear, stability control completely off. And look at this, you can just hang it sideways. Now I still do feel it cutting in. Do you feel that, Mike? Yeah, I do in the back. Yeah. But look at that. It's so <laughs> slick out here. It's like oils all over the place. I don't know. It's so slippery. Um, because the viewers will want to know, let's see if it'll drift around the corner. So we have, let's make sure we have all of our settings correct. We have regen set to full, which is uber strong. Look at that. It's just pulling the car back. It's definitely stronger than normal tripod. Oh, so much stronger. And then we have stability off and a rear wheel drive only handling bias. The track is very wet, I would say. Uh, we have puddles of water sitting here. So let's just stick it in. Look at this, it's so slick. But you can do 32 mile an hour skids, 35 miles an hour, right to the edge. <laughs> and you can do even at higher speeds too, these $50 Century UHP tires though. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, it's so drifty. Well, it kind of is grabbing brakes there. So that was 70 miles an hour. It didn't necessarily love that, but let's just send it here. Look at that, no hands on the wheel. <laughs> and we'll go sideways here. It's so easy, oh my God. You can position this car right on the edge. We can go all the way over here. <laughs> we didn't really have the speed to continue a transition, but it's so good. All right, now let's go everything 50-50 and see if she'll still slide. No, see that? It just goes huge difference. huge difference. But it seems to be adjusting the traction control as well. So now we're back to rear wheel drive where we can really just <laughs> hang it sideways like this. Need a little windshield wiper car. Look at this, full send. Oh, grippy on the transition there though. <laughs> Century UHPs, brother. The little tires are red on the screen. <laughs> Why is this so funny? So traction control again there. I don't, it's hard to figure out, I guess, when it's gonna kick in or not. I think the rain is something to do with it. It's possible. So let's go rear wheel drive stability full on. And I'm just gonna, we're back on the skid pad. I'm gonna just turn the car and nail it. Wow. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> nope, not happy. Oh, I'll try it again. <laughs> okay let's go like i think like a 25 75 would be a pretty good balance for speed so let's get this thing going it puts the power down really well we'll just get it into a corner here see it rotates under braking because the regen and i'm hard power out and that's good because you get a little front axle helping you get out of a corner. So I would say this is, you can still slide it, but it wants to pull it straight. So for someone trying to get around quickly, full rear wheel drive is not the fastest. Tesla's drift preset is full rear stability off. So this is that, which makes sense because you can just do these big skids in silence, which is so wild, <laughs> first of all. <laughs> this is so great. <laughs> All right, so we figured out that track mode version two is definitely the coolest thing ever put on a car. Also, $50 tires are amazing. Um, Mike, would you mind getting some shots for the viewers from the outside so they can see what this looks like?
I think it looked good. And there you have it. Track mode is incredible. I think if you're on a back road, definitely get that handling balance a little bit more. 50-50, maybe 35% at least to the front. Uh, rear wheel drive, again, it's still using the front motor when you get it full sideways and you can't do any crazy 360 degree skids like you do in dyno mode. Um, but there you go, it's transformed this car. It has made the Model 3 fun to drive because old track mode really was not great. It just got in the way. Of course, it's good for people chasing lap times, but if you're like me and you want just to put cheap tires on your car and skid around and do a lot of drifting, which I enjoy, this is really cool. I think with that said, we should go do a couple more drifts around the track and wrap up this video. Everyone should install this software on your car. It's coming soon. It's really great.